All right, we're taking a look at the 1983 San Diego Chargers. It says preseason offense. It says San Diego Chargers versus Philadelphia Eagles. Exhibition game number two, August 13th, 1983. And it says receiver ready list. As always, when we go through these, I will caution you on putting too much stock in what it says because a lot of times these playbooks can be grab bagged from different places and it's not necessarily everything in one spot. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, the perfect look at what an actual maybe playbook that the players would have gotten. So this may be my chair, Justin, this may be a receiver ready list. Uh, it certainly has a lot more to it, but you know, I don't, I don't know exactly. I guess the receiver ready list is what is on the next page. Uh, and so that is the uh, for the San Diego Chargers versus Philadelphia Eagles, um, it's got drop back passes. It's got option, option left and right. I don't know what those plays will be. We'll find out hopefully. Play action screens, uh, primary run game, the draw, uh, one draw in, goal line run. So I'm guessing that everything that shows up in this particular playbook is going to come uh, from that list. And so that's what that was that's what was available to be run so we've got uh let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve dropbacks two option option routes of some sort three play actions three screens and it looks like three six nine ten uh, about ten run plays that can be run both directions so 10 11 20 30 20 30 counter uh 40 50 belly 40 50 lead uh, 60, 70 outside, uh, which I assume is like an outside zone type of play. We'll find out. Uh, sweep and a toss. One draw and four goal line runs, uh, which are far eye, eye tight wing. Uh, there's a lot of tags on formations that we'll look at. Then it's got some situational. What I guess this is probably plays pulled from that ready list, uh, but this is things that they want to be able to run in goal line, things that they want to be able to run in uh, goal line and short yardage, red zone plays, and then nickel plays, which I'm guessing is when, uh, when or if the other team is bringing in, you know, passing situations. I'm guessing that's that's what we're talking about. Uh, the other team has a nickel uh, defense on the field. I'm guessing. Um, it says red ball. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to move past it. There's a page that I cannot read. It says Sammy Kennedy. That's all I got out of it. Sammy Kennedy. Uh, maybe maybe Sammy Kennedy's a receiver. Let's see. Sammy Kennedy, football player. Let's see what we get. Uh, Sammy Kennedy, spelled differently, plays uh, football for played football at Coastal Carolina, but that was much longer, much later than uh, than we would be looking for. So I do not see a Sammy Kennedy. Maybe it was a coach. Don't know. Didn't didn't come up with anything. That's too bad. Okay. Uh, it's got some abbreviations. We'll kind of move past those. Terminology, if we need to refer back to the page of terminology, it's basically a glossary of terms so that you can uh, know it and understand it. I, you know, if I suppose, obviously I don't know what a current NFL playbook looks like. If it's even, you know, probably not a book, probably digital, uh, maybe digital. Uh, I'm assuming it's whether or not they have that, this to me would have been important. A lot of coaches ask, you know, should I put a glossary in there? And of course, I go back to we did a JDFB Quick Clinic not long back on should you even give a printed playbook, and I gave some reasons why I don't think so. Uh, I don't think you should. So I've put glossaries in playbooks before with the idea that the kids would be able to study it. Uh, you know, this was a time when. We're still right on the heels, if they're not still, and probably some players still are working another job in the off season. To whereas now, like they're there all the time. I heard an Urban Meyer interview the other day uh, talking about how you know we don't do two a days anymore. A lot of guys, a lot of people are shocked by that, and not so much coaches, but we don't we don't need to do two a days. Well, you don't need a glossary because these guys are this is their full time job. So we'll kind of move past it. Position names are what you would expect them to be. Uh, nothing special on that page. Hole numbering. Uh, traditional hole numbering, 2468 to the right, 
uh, or zero two four six eight to the right, one three five seven nine to the left. The backs are numbered two, three, and four uh, as well. So, uh, and I believe there's something in there uh, kind of interesting the that the I formation plays, and we'll get to that. Uh, only use one number while the split back, and that's pretty much what you got here. You got two back, split back, four near looks, and you've got, and not really any near that I saw, mostly far looks and uh, a split back, and then you've got eye formation looks. So uh, line splits, two foot across the board, three feet for the tight end, uh, two feet between the t- center guard and guard tackle. Uh, the tight end, then has a couple of different alignments. Open is a nasty split, what I would call a nasty split, five to six yards. Out is eight to 12 yards. Backfield depth, uh, feet five yards from the ball when we're in the split back or the you know the, the offset back, not the offset eye, but just like a, a, a far or a near formation, what I would call it. And um, the eye back is seven yards from the ball. I guess that means the fullback is still five or maybe a little bit tighter. We don't get that. Uh, from the eye formation. Flankers are 8 to 12 yards from the tackle. That's kind of standard. We consider 10 yards, um, maybe even 12. 10 to 12 is kind of a normal split. Uh, there are times we even go as wide as 14, but generally 8 is a tight split, 12 is a wide split, 10 is a kind of standard split. Uh, if you're in the sp- in the slot, 6 yards from the tackle. If you're in twins, I thought this is interesting, if you're in twins, it's automatically three yards from the X. So we're talking about the flanker or the Z is three yards from the X when you go to a twins formation, meaning that the Z and the X are on the same side. So tighter than than you would be uh, as a slot. I'm not sure the the distinction there. And then a wing is three feet from the Y. The wing is if he's in a wing alignment, he's three feet from the Y. It's got the huddle. None of us care about that anymore, right? Moving on. We still huddle, by the way. Uh, I still prefer a huddle most of the time. I use temp- tempo to me as a change-up, not a like hard and fast, like this is, you know, we go, da 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 it's, it's, we can go slow, we can go fast. I like to get in the huddle. I like for everybody to be kind of relaxed. Other people like doing it different. Offensive plays are called in several parts. You call the formation, the direction, uh, the variations, then the play call. So, Formation is, you know, what the formation is, your pro type of thing. Direction would be indicated uh, which way the tight end. It says tight end and flanker. Uh, so I guess it depends. In the standard, right or left tells the tight end or flanker to go to a certain direction, and then you can tag it with the twins and the, the flanker, the, the Z flips over. Uh, there's variations that we mentioned before, open, flex, those kinds of things. Uh, play call, single-digit number. Uh, single or double digit number is your run plays, uh, the style of play in the blocks, and then we go over the snap count. Not going to spend a lot of time on the snap count because, again, so many of us are are just going, you know, on one or going, not going into a huddle, and so it's kind of irrelevant. We won't spend a lot of time on it. There is an audible system built in. This talks about the audible system. I imagine it's interesting. Uh, I think the only thing that I want to mention is. Basically, what happens is that with the audible system is the quarterback, and we'll just we'll we'll read through it. So, if the quarterback wants to audible, first of all, he goes up the line. This is the snap count. He walks up the line and he says "hike," and that like starts everything. It can also start the play, and I imagine it's one of those hard count like you know hike, trying to get get everybody to to jump, and you know you, you can also snap the ball on that. You go it goes hike set. Uh, and they will snap the ball on set as well. There's no audible if it goes on hike or set. Uh, and then after those two um, words, the quarterback could then call the audible. And it seems to me that the quarterback was still calling the that you know the design here is that Dan Fouts was was calling the plays. I don't know that for sure, but it seems to be that that was still the case at this time. Uh, of course. At one time, all quarterbacks called their own plays. And it's interesting on the next page uh, what some things have changed. So the quarterback comes to the line, he says, hike, and then he can call Utah, which has since been replaced by Omaha as your favorite uh, you know, audible name. So he calls it out, and then he can call dummy audibles. If he, he can use a dummy name that they don't use, all those kinds of things. And then he goes set. I'm sorry, it goes hike, then the audible, then set. 
so I had that wrong. There's just hike, and then any audible call you want to make, set, and then hut, hut, hut. Which nobody uses anymore. I think it's funny. Uh, you know, the, the hike and hut. And sometimes you get quarterbacks who come in, and they're, they've been prepared by their dad or something. And it's happened a few times where we're like, here's our snap count, and you know, this is the snap count, and the kid just insists on saying hut or hike. We're like, no, 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 no. So that's that's the basics. Uh, formations. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I skipped one page. Check with me. So this was what I thought was funny because check with me has been not new. It's been 20 years or so. But check with me used to mean go to the line of scrimmage. Not used to mean. Check with me today for the most part means Go to the line of scrimmage. Let me look, me, the offensive coordinator, let me look over the alignment they give us, and then I'll give you a signal for something on your wristband or something like that to, to run or on a sign or whatever. Check with me just meant we're not going to call anything. We're going to go to the line, and the quarterback is going to look it over and then call the audible that he wants. Now, I assume that Coriel or an offensive coordinator, if, if he wasn't the offensive coordinator, I'm not sure, could call the play You know, from the signal, something from the sidelines. I'm sure that there's some way of doing that, maybe. But maybe they just put everything in Dan Fouts' hands and said, do what you do, and, and that was it. So, interesting there. Um... That's why I'm given to think that that the quarterback was calling the plays because the system of check with me was just on the quarterback. And that's something that I really like. I will say that. I really like putting it in the hands of the quarterback. On to the formations. Uh, and again, they're not going to be very, very exotic. If you just call right, it is your basic pro with a tight end to the right and a, and a slot receiver, a flanker. Uh, split out to the right, your Z, X to the left, and split backs. If you call left, it flips. If you call I right or I left, it's basically a tag on right and left. So then you get the exact same thing. If you go I right, you've got the tight end and the Z, the X split out to the left, but you've got your I formation. Same thing, I left. Pro, which... I've, we use pro and plow as the front, and we don't call anything because it's almost always one back, and we use a number for the H back. Pro right is actually what I would call far, meaning that the fullback, I guess, is five yards behind the quarterback, and then kind of in the guard tackle gap area, doesn't give exact alignment you would have the other back. So it is uh, a far alignment. So for those of you that know wing T, if you did a pro right wing, pro right wing would give you a 100 formation, a uh, wing T formation with the tight end and the wing back to the right. Essentially, your ba- you know, pretty much your base formation. If you go strong, so I, I did miss this before, if you go strong right, that tells that that gives you a near formation. So now you've got the fullback five yards behind the quarterback, and the what I'm guessing is the tailback. I think they call him the halfback uh, is split over or is over in the guard tackle gap to the tight end side. So that was what I would call a near formation. So that's base formations. Then you get into spread. Uh, spread looks like your basic flex bone formation. Uh, it is you know the the fullback is behind the quarterback. Quarterback is always under center in these, by the way. Always under center. Uh, the tight end is off the ball. The Z is on. The halfback, whatever he's called, uh, it's labeled as the A back in the playbook here. He is on a wing on the opposite side of the tight end. So spread right, spread left. Frog right and frog left are a flipped uh, formation where the X is going to come over. The Z is going to align in a wing. I imagine you could also eye frog right if you wanted to uh, and tag them that way. So this is an unbalanced formation where the Y is covered up. Uh, he is not eligible in order to have seven men on the line of scrimmage or with the people who want to argue that the rules are completely changed, which they're not. 
they can only have four in the backfield. <laughs> so anyway, so the X can't be off. Formation variations. They've just got a few things here. I'll kind of, you know, slot. Uh, I guess slot is the, um, so slot and twins are both bringing the X and Z on the same side. The difference being that slot uses a six yard split from the end man on the line of scrimmage and twins uses a three yard split from the X. They've got a change, which is flips the A and the B backs. Um, I don't, I swear I didn't make up that twins formation. It was here, but I don't see it. Interesting page on motion calls it movement. Uh, movement is very important to our total offensive system. There are several reasons for movement in our offense. And I think that these are important. I think this is worth knowing, uh, to create a personnel advantage. These are reasons to use motion. A lot of, a lot of guys are using motion for no apparent reason or they don't use motion at all because you're going hurry up. That's fine. But a lot of guys aren't going hurry up and aren't using motion. And I think you're making a mistake. Among the most prominent reasons to create a personnel advantage by creating coverage mismatches on our receivers or backs to create a personnel advantage by affecting changes in run support and force responsibility. Extremely, extremely important. If you can accomplish that, if you can cause a defense to change their run support two seconds before a snap, you want to do that. Create secondary movement in an effort to better enable our quarterback to recognize coverages. Yes. By making a uh, uh, motion, you force teams out of disguise to get our personnel in better position to execute their given assignment, obviously to create problems for the defense and man under coverages when attempting to hold or bump receivers at the line of scrimmage. So in order to get off of press press was obviously a little bit more violent 1983. Okay. So maybe not as big an issue now, but certainly something that can help you out. Create an opportunity for indecision, confusion, and or misalignment by the secondary, probably rare in the NFL, but more likely at the high school level. To cause movement on the part of the defense in an effort to realign their personnel with the coverage calls and changes and not allow them to set themselves and react to familiar offensive patterns, make the defense play on the move. Force opponents to spend practice time and effort on adjusting to movement patterns rather than improving defensive skills and schemes. That's the That, to me, in, in a high school setting, is as valuable as anything because of the fact that your opponent has to go through. If they don't have a good... Now, if you run the four-two-five defense system, just an example, three-four system, uh, four-three system, any of our systems in JDFB Insider, thirty-three stack, you've got a a simple set of rules where we can show up and you can line up in anything, and we're okay. It's not a big deal. But not everybody has that. A lot of teams are running flavor of the week, or they don't have specific sets of rules, and they're sitting there worried about. This formation, that formation, this formation, that formation. I don't worry formations. If there's a tendency in a formation, great. I don't worry formations. I worry plays because we have simple sets of rules. But a lot of teams don't, and you get a lot of value, even if it's just wasting the other team, other other team's coach's time going through film. You get a lot of value out of those formations, out of the uh, different formations and different motions. And to create visual complexity to the defense, yet be able to run the same basic plays from a variety of looks. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, that's what we do in our offense in the pistol power offense system. That's the way that I coach defense uh, as well is you're not doing that much. And if you are, you're not doing it that well. You just got a lot of window dressing and smoke and mirrors. So that's the purpose of the formations there and what's trying to be accomplished. They go through the motions. It's it's your basic motions. The H is out, the H across, uh, the Z across, zoom, zap, zip, uh, all of those things. So their their zip motions or, or their Z motions, I'll just go through them real quick. Zip is Z in, zoom is Z out. Um, it can also mean Z uh, over based on the call that's 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 made because one of the things that they do is that the motion called is telling you how to motion to get to the formation called so that if we called, um, a right formation, if we called zoom, right, that means that you line up, I guess 
on the left and motion all the way across to where you're supposed to be in the right formation on the side of the Y. Uh, so zoom, zap is Z across. Fake zoom is like an orbit type of motion, uh, you know, down and back, just your standard. Uh, fly is movement across the ball, movement away from the ball. I'm not sure the difference of fly and, oh, it's tight end. For some reason, fly is the tight end, but okay. Uh, buzz, yeah. All right, so we got those. Basic motions, nothing nothing spectacular. A couple of variations, you know, with the twins, as I mentioned before. I knew it was real. They've got some fullback motions. This is a little more in-depth than we need. And then a look at the different fronts, defensive fronts, and how you name them. The different defensive pass coverages and how you name them. Not critical for our purposes today, but you can go back and look at them if you like, the different blitz calls and twists and, and how they are named. 